Good morning. We're just going to give a moment to clear the waiting room. As a reminder, when you are entering from the waiting room, please do remain on mute unless or until you are appearing or testifying before the board. Good morning, this is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Thank you, Danny. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the Boston licensing board and today I'm pleased to be joined by Commissioner Liam Curran and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Thank you. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on today's agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the licensee, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department, and whether there are any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident. I will then swear in all parties, after which the police report will be read into the record. The licensee or the representative will then have the opportunity to make a brief statement followed by questions by the chair and commissioners. Again, all testimony would be limited only to individuals with firsthand personal knowledge of the alleged incident. Beginning with item number one on this, morning, this morning's agenda, calling DND Hospitality LLC doing business as Publico, located at 11 Dorchester Street in South Boston. Date of the incident, February 20th, 2022. Assault and battery patron on patron in violation of Mass General Laws Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Executive Secretary Leslie Delaney Hawkins with the law firm of Prince LaBelle Ty on behalf of the licensee. With me is Theo Baugus, the owner and manager of record. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, good morning to the board. Uh, my name is Patrick McDonough. I'm a sergeant with the Boston Police Department assigned to area C6 in South Boston. Great. Thank you, Sergeant McDonough. And would it be possible to turn your camera on just so we can swear you in in a moment? Perfect. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Hi, I'm police officer Brian Carnell. I also work out of District C6. Great. Thank you very much. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Sergeant McDonough, you can please proceed with the police report. Thank you. Uh, I will be reading from Boston Police Report Incident Number 222-012-481, written on February 20th, 2022, at 9.14 p.m. The narrative states at about 8.40 p.m. on Sunday, February 20th, 2022, officers Connell and Cody and the Fox 102F responded to a radio call for an assault and battery in progress at 30, at the, I'm sorry, at 11 Dorchester Street, South Boston. Upon arrival, officers met by the bouncer, Malik Andrews, who stated that a patron inside the bar had been punched by a male suspect who left the bar and took off in a vehicle about 10 minutes prior to their arrival. Malik Andrews described the suspect as a white male with dark hair, wearing a red Canada goose jacket, gray sweatpants, and appeared to be in his mid-20s. The suspect allegedly took off in a silver two-door older model sedan. As officers entered the bar, staff directed them to the upper section of the bar where the victim, Mark Adonizio, was laid out on the floor, conscious and alert, being assisted by two females. Officers spoke with nearby witnesses as well as the victim. All parties could not recall the incident that took place. Officers observed blood all over the victim's Adonizio's shirt, who appeared to be suffering from a nosebleed. Officers requested Boston EMS to respond and escorted the victim out to the front of the establishment to be evaluated. EMS responded and after further evaluation, they decided not to transport the victim. The Fox 914 Sergeant McDonough responded to the scene to do a license premise violation for the establishment, violation number 044251. Officers offered the victim a ride who stated that he lived in Winchester and would get an Uber with his friend Tatum Driscoll. Officers advised Malik Andrews to recontact police if the suspect were to return. Officers canvassed the su surrounding area for the suspect to no avail. And that is the end of the narrative of that police report. Great. Thank you, Sergeant. Attorney Hawkins, would you like to address the alleged incident? Thank you very much. Uh, Sergeant, if I may just ask you a couple of questions. 
were you present for the actual alleged incident? I was not, no. And when you responded, was the licensee cooperative? Yes, they were very cooperative. And to your knowledge, it was the licensee who called police, correct? Yes, it was. Thank you very much, Sergeant. No further questions for the Sergeant. If I may turn to Mr. Baugus. Uh, Mr. Baugus, were you present for the night of the alleged incident? I was not. Are you aware of what occurred on the night yes. of the alleged incident? Yes, I was. How are you aware? Uh, I had a call, obviously management called me when the incident occurred. Um, I had come back a few hours afterwards. They told me exactly what happened. I did get a call from a detective a couple of days later asking to see if we had any video footage because I believe the uh, gentleman wanted to press some kind of charges. I got the footage for her, called her the next day. I can't remember the detective's name. And she says, no need to have any footage. She's dropping everything. And I had mentioned to her, it's funny because after seeing the video, he definitely was the aggressor with the situation. And then I definitely saw the other gentleman with the red jacket hit him once and walk out the uh, restaurant pretty quickly. And Mr. Gagas, could you just give a quick overview of what exactly you saw when you reviewed the video? Um, uh, the gentleman in the red jacket, and I don't, obviously we don't know his name, and sorry, my apologies for not knowing the victim's name. Um, they had been talking and the victim was talking what appeared to be somewhat aggressively and the gentleman kept on backing away from him. And this went on for five or 10 minutes. Not, they looked like they were almost having a conversation. And then at one point, I believe the gentleman with the red jacket asked him to come outside. And he did not, he looked at him again and then the gentleman got hit, put his hands on his face, pushed his face and that's when the gentleman with the red jacket punched him in the face. And that's when your staff called police? Correct, they saw somebody laying down on the floor, obviously he was bleeding. Um, our security person in front saw somebody walking out and he referenced something about, I hate racist people and he didn't know what he's talking about. That's how we figured out somebody was inside our atrium and that's when management called police. And were you fully staffed that evening? Yes, I was. And you do you have, this was a long weekend. Do you have security on weekends? We do. We and do. How many security do you have? Uh, two to three, depending on what type of long weekend it is. And uh, unfortunately, you noted that you no longer have the video. And, no. and why, why did you not retain the video? After speaking, and that's my fault, after speaking to the detective and said you no longer need it, I didn't even realize we got a premise violation. And a few weeks ago, <laughs> I had something in the mail and I tried looking back at the video, but our videotapes only last two to three months. So unfortunately, I couldn't find the video again. And to your knowledge, this is not an ongoing investigation? Uh, to my knowledge, no. Thank you. Uh, respectfully, uh, we submit that the licensee did exactly what they should have done. They called police. Uh, they um, immediately took action and cooperated. Uh, we apologize for not retaining the video. As, as Mr. Bauga said, he didn't, he didn't realize it needed to be retained after the detective informed him of that. Uh, this is a restaurant. We have no history of violations at this location. This was not reasonably foreseeable. And again, the licensee did everything they should when an incident did occur. With that, we're obviously here for any questions from the board. Thank you, Attorney Hawkins. Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions for the licensee? I have no questions. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran, any questions? Thank you very much. Great, thank you. The board will take this under advisement. Calling item number two, Orient Heights Yacht Club, located at 61 Bayswater Street in East Boston, dated the incident January 15, 2022. Patron just discharged firearm after exiting premise in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. Expired licenses, certificate of inspection, and entertainment in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, Boards Rule 1.02b, and Chapter 140, Section 183a. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, um, Mr. Secretary. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Stephen Miller, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller. I have with me this morning um, Mia Gardino, who was a bartender that evening, Joe Quigley, who was the person in charge, and Jerry Caggiano, who is the manager of records. Great. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I'm Detective Alfred James. Thank you, Detective James. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the incident who wish to testify this morning? Lieutenant Troy, if necessary. 
Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? Uh, ah, great, they're all with you. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? We do. Yes. yes. Great, thank you. Detective James, you may please proceed with the police report. Yes, I have about three different reports. Mm -hmm. On the first one, about 3.45 a.m. on Saturday, January 15, officers responded to a call for shots fired on Bayswater Street and St. Andrew Road. The, officer, the information received by CAD, the CAD system described a suspect vehicle, a white pickup truck driven by a white male. The second vehicle was described as a white car driven by a white female. Caller believes both officers went into the Orient Heights Yacht Club at 61 Bayswater Street. On arrival, observers observed one white male and one wife exiting the Orient Heights Yacht Club walking towards a white pickup truck with ignition running. The officer approached these men and spoke to them regarding shots fired. The white female identified Mia Gardino was accompanied by a white male identified with Joseph Quigley. Ms. Gardino informed her that she observed a black dark colored car with three occurrence in its rear seat dri drive past her on Bayswater Street. While passing by, the occupant in the rear driver's side seat extended a hand out the window and fired off three rounds. Witness Scott can observe three flashes as well, consistent with the number of shots he believed was fired. Witness Scardina led the officers to where the shots were fired. Upon doing so, three cell casings were located in the street between 54 and 57 Bayswater Street. The officer's request a call back be made to the caller to allow the officer to speak with him or her. The address of 60 Bayswater Street was identified, but was not the caller. An identified witness arrived at six of Bayswater in the four houses that he overheard, overheard a definite, definite five or six rounds. The officers returned to the street and located an additional round. The gold 902 Sergeant Smith, the gold 415, Officer Solomon Vizenza responded to assist in securing the scene. The gold 808 Detective Jadra arrived, the Captain James, I'm sorry, arrived and arrived and secured the four shell casing. One moment, please. Mm -hmm. Of course. Second report. As a result of an ongoing investigation that includes the viewing of videos and witness statements, detectives were able to identify the suspects as a keen talker. On January 26, Detective James, Detective Montesina, and Son Detective Blass conducted a recorded interview with Keen Tucker at District 7. Tucker was read, was read his rights and signed a document. During the interview, Tucker admitted that while intoxicated, he discharged a fire while traveling in a black Ford SUV. Tucker first stated that he pointed a gun in the air when he fired it. During the investigation, Tucker facilitated the recovery of a black and silver and color Smith and Wesson nine, nine millimeter handgun that used during the incident. The gun was loaded with a feeding device containing nine, five, nine, sorry, five nine millimeter cartridges. Tug was placed under arrest and booked at District 7 and would be charged with unlawful position of a firearm, positive for ammunition without an FID card, carrying a loaded firearm on a public way, possession of a large feeding device and discharge firearm on a dwelling. And on Saturday, March 5th at 8.05 p.m., a code 35 license print film was completed at Orient Heights Yacht Club, located at 61 Basewater Street. Present during the spectrum were Sergeant Detective Blast, Detective James, and Detective Stone. At the time of their entry in the club, bartender Mia Gardina was identified as the person in charge of the business. Joe Cliff later arrived on that site as the PIC. During the investigation of the shots fired incident that occurred on January 15th, Austin learned from the suspect, Kim Tucker, that he had entered the yacht club unescorted. Specifically, Tucker stated, there was a group of people when I was right at the door and I just walked in. Tucker reported that while inside the yacht club, he had a verbal dispute with another patron. Tucker indicated that the dispute with the patron stemmed from a gang feud. Tucker also noted that the other patron threatened to shoot him during their encounter. Tucker went on to explain that he started firing in the air outside the 
the yacht club as a result of his encounter with the patron while inside the club. During an inspection of the yacht club on March 5th, they still know that inspection number 72028 and entertainment license 113139 permits were expired. So on the take to blast, a completed license permit inspection notice 042502. The violation noted were patron discharged firearm after existing premises, patron not a member and escorted while inside the premises, expired inspection permit and entertainment license. Notice 04502 was signed and accepted by Joe Quigley. That's it, sir. Thank you very much, Detective. Uh, Attorney Miller, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yes, uh, Detective. Um, yes, sir. You you uh, viewed the videos, videos provided by the licensee? Yes, sir. And, and did you review them uh, also with Mr. Quigley? No, I did not. I, to be quite honest, sir, uh, Mr. Quigley was there when I got the videos, but I don't recall, to be honest with you, if we sat down and reviewed it, sir, to try to be honest. Saturday morning. So you don't recall on a Saturday morning reviewing those videos with Mr. Quigley? I'm trying to remember. So I know I've been there with him a number of times while I was investigating it, but I'm not sure. I don't okay. want to say yes or no on that, sir. And, and um, Mr. Quigley and the, the club cooperated with you at all times concerning this investigation? Yes, sir, they did. Um, and you have no personal knowledge of, of the actual incident. Is that correct? In what sense, sir? Uh, of, of witnessing fire, the, the shots fired? No, sir. It, but you were on, you were on the scene um, when, the, when the police were called based on the shots being fired? Yes, sir. I responded to the scene, sir. And at that time, um, Ms. Good, Godino and Mr. Quigley um, were very cooperative with you, explaining to you what they th about a car going past and shooting shooting off rounds. I did not speak to them that night, sir. I spoke to them afterwards, okay. not that night. Okay. Um, thank you, thank you, Detective, I pre uh, for your uh, comments. Thank you, sir. Um, so, um, Madam Chair, I'd like to start with, uh, and, and commissioners, I'd like to start with Mia Godino. Um, so, oops, she's gonna come right here. Uh, Hi. So, um, Mia, were you working on the night of the 14th and 15th? Yes. And, and what were you doing? Bartending. You were bartending. Was it a busy night? Um, no. So, Approximately how many people were on the premises that night? I would say like 15, 20. And did you notice any issues um, or problems between customers, any arguments, loud voices, pushing, shoving, et cetera, inside the premises? Um, so later that night, you were leaving the premises with Mr. Quigley. Um, and uh, you had finished cleaning up and handling the receipts for the evening, et cetera. Yep. Um, at that time, you saw a car uh, drive by the premises. Yep. And what you saw was um, shots being fired. Is that correct? Yeah. So we were getting into our car and the car drove by and What did you do? We went back inside. Um, and the police arrived very shortly thereafter? Yeah, yes. Um, so you went out and spoke to the priest, police and told yep. them uh, what you saw? Told them, showed them, yes. You showed them where, the, where you thought the cartridges might be? Yes. Uh, I, I have nothing further. Do you, would you have any questions for Ms. Godino or would you like to wait, Madam Chair and Commissioners, until we finish with uh, Mr. Quigley? Uh, why don't you continue with Mr. Quigley and um, I'll hold off any questions until then. Okay, great. Excuse me, sir. Um, there's one thing. I, 
with Mr. Quigley, I just have to make a statement. I thinking about it, I remember speaking to Mr. Quigley, showing the video, trying to identify the persons, if he knew the persons in the video. I did review the video with him, sir. I just recall that I did. I Thank you, showed it to him to identify the persons we had in the video, see if he knew any one of them. I did do that, sir. Thank you very much, Sergeant. Sergeant. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, so, Mr. Quigley, um, were you on the premises that evening, uh, yes. uh, the 14th and 15th? Yes. And you were the um, person in, uh, in charge? Yes. Um, you heard Mia say that it was not a busy night, 15 to 20 people. Is that correct? Correct. Did you notice any issues? Uh, loud voices, arguments, pushing, shoving, any sort of altercation Nothing. on the premises? And, and you heard <clears throat> the detectives say, uh, confirm you reviewed the video with um, the detective? Yeah, of the evening. Saturday morning. Yeah. We, we looked at it. And, and then they took copies of it. And, and the uh, point was to try and uh, identify who was involved in this. Correct. Um, you didn't, prior to, prior to reviewing the video, neither you or um, Ms. Gardino had any idea who was driving by the premises and shooting. No. And, and based on reviewing the video with um, the detective, um, you were you with the police were able to figure out who the person was, or the police were able to the, figure the out. The police were able to figure it out. Yes. And and um, based on the video, um, you saw that there were two men on the premises. Can you just describe what you saw in the video? There were two just men. Talk, there talk. were two men that walked down the stairs, went outside, and only one man coming back into the art club. When when they left the premises, when they were on the premises, was there any threats or arguments or loud voices or pushing and shoving? No. And and the entire evening, you weren't aware of any any issues. Is that correct? Correct. So when, when was um, the um, club started? How long ago was that formed? Nin 1901. 1901. Um, can you describe how um, members and guests access the premises? Members have a fob that allows them in non-members buzz and it rings the bartender upstairs and they get buzzed in. And, and there's, there's a camera also? There is a camera, yes. And so on, on this particular evening, um, the doors are locked, correct? The doors are locked. And, and um, this particular person um, that eventually came back hours later, uh, well, let me ask you the question, based on the Based on the video, um, approximately what time did this person who came back at 3.30 in the morning, what time did he leave the premises? Between 12 and 12.30. Okay. Um, so uh, also on, on that evening, um, there was uh, this person walked in with um, guests of another member? Correct. And the member was there waiting for his guests. And so to, based on, on um, either the video or just your knowledge that evening, uh, did it appear that this person um, knew um, people there? He wasn't out of place, was he? Did, he? did he know other members and guests that were there? Yes. Um, So how, <clears throat> how long approximately was he inside the premises? I would say a, a half hour. Approximately a half hour? Yeah. Um, and and um, immediately after um, 
the uh, inspection by the police on the inspired certificate of inspection and entertainment, um, you were made aware that the um, certificate of inspection had been paid for by the club and also the um, entertainment license. Yes. And, and are those um, posted properly now? Yes. And you're aware in the future that even if you don't have the certificate of inspection, as long as you pay for it, you can put a your receipt. Receipt up there. Okay. Yes. Um, I have no further questions, Madam Chair. Thank you, Attorney Miller. Um, Chair Mondes, do you have any questions for the licensee? Yes. Um, just to clarify, Attorney Miller, so this Mr. Tucker was a guest of um, a member. No, oh, he actually snuck in, Madam Chair. There were there were two or three guests that buzzed in. Uh, there was a member who said that uh, was inside waiting for guests, and he happened to, he obviously knew what the procedures were, and he walked in with them, and the, um, we just assumed that he was a guest of a member, but he was not. Um, we went, we obviously went through that um, in detail to ascertain whether, in fact, he was a guest of a member, but he just snuck in. At the same time, the door was open with uh, two or three other guests coming in. Okay. And since he, since he knew a lot of people in the club, um, they just assumed that he was, he was one of the guests. They've, they've since upgraded their cameras and, and uh, they have the intercom and they've upgraded their cameras. And now um, each person has to, that comes in, they, don't, they can't walk in as a group. Each person has to uh, go to the camera and identify who the member is if they're a guest. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Commissioner Sachs or Commissioner Curran, any questions? Uh, yeah, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number three, Fuente Cleaning Services, Inc., doing business as Biliares, Columbia, located at 28 Bennington Street in East Boston. Date of the incident, June 20th, 2022. Exceeded occupancy capacity in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.03J and 1.06A and F. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? The Bentley Pedanias. Great. Thank you, Mr. Pedanias. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Officer Cunningham. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Come to protect the Troy if necessary. Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I, I do. do. Thank you, officer. You may please proceed with the police report. Um, I'm the author of this uh, police report. I'm reading from Boston Police Report number I-222-053046. On Friday, don't be there. Uh, um, that, that's, that matter is a uh, um, couple down. Uh, that's not the oh, matter. Oh, I'm that. sorry. Correct. That's correct. Um, this matter, this Officer Sullivan uh, uh, balances this here. It's on this call? No. Uh, I, I can read the report. Uh, Officer Miranda was... Uh, yes, sir. Officer Sullivan Venezia. Hey, sorry okay. to cut you off. There you are, sir. Right. Um, yeah. If you have a copy of this report, if not, I can I can read it and you can just answer any questions regarding it, okay? Okay, yeah. At, th at this time, I do not have a copy. Yep, no problem. Okay, uh, you just the support uh, Officer Sullivan Venezia, can I please just swear you in? Um, I don't think you've been sworn in yet. Thank you. If you could please raise your right hand. Yeah. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Lieutenant Troy, you may please proceed. Uh, this is a report authored by uh, Officer Sean Miranda, and it reads as follows. On Monday, June 20th, 2022, at 1.30, Officers Miranda and Sullivan were in Gold 101 Alpha, uh, responded to a call for loud music at 28 Bennington Street, East Boston, the Lodge, Columbia. At uh, 12.29, officers uh, responded to a first call for loud music at the same location and spoke with security staff at that time and for informing the officer that, uh, that the music was too loud and, and complaints were being received. 
at that time, officers suggested uh, lowering the music and keeping the exterior entrance door open only while allowing others to enter. During the first response, officers observed the security officer holding the entrance door open while checking identification guards for groups of people at a time. During the second response, due to the fact that a second complaint was received, officers requested a patrol supervisor to respond to assist with a code 35 inspection. Uh, Sergeant Downey responded and spoke with security officers at the door. With body worn cameras activated, uh, Sergeant Downey asked security officers how many persons were inside. Uh, the security officer reported 45. Sergeant Downey then requested to speak with the manager. And minutes later, um, the manager, uh, Marie Quintana, responded to the entrance doorway and was informed of the violation by Sergeant Downey. A uh, licensed premise inspection notice was written and issued to the manager Quintana for exceeding the amount uh, maximum allowed occupancy limit, and excessive noise and loud music. The occup uh, occupancy capacity authorizer stated in the uh, CD license was 49. A video countdown of persons departing through the front door entrance to include employees uh, still inside totaled 193 persons. Uh, Sergeant Downey also informed Officer Miranda that an estimated, an estimated additional 20 per persons departed via rear doors, which would uh, then total approximately 213 persons. Uh, previously, on uh, February 28th, uh, at once uh, another uh, report was written with a similar license premise uh, violation. And that's the extent of the report ordered by Officer Miranda. And Officer Sullivan is here to. He was present also. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Peranios, would you like to address the alleged incident? What happened was um, we had a private party and we really did not know. We, there's nothing we could say about it because we really didn't know that we couldn't go with capacity. It wasn't being for the public. It was only for the, um, but it exceeded too much, too many people. I wasn't there that day, but um, I did fire the security. I got a new security guy. That was not acceptable whatsoever. So I take full charge responsibility. There's nothing I can really argue, say. But um, as the officer is here, lately we have been very cooperative. We have been helping. There's no more problems. The streets being clear. There's really nothing I can say about it. It was a private party. We didn't have really um, the security over overdid it because he should have never let so many people in. I mean. This, this is a small place. You shouldn't never, never. That was a big, big mistake. So I really take full responsibility and I apologize. There's nothing I can say. Thank you, Chairman Joyce. Do you have any questions? No. Um, so I just want to make sure I have the facts clear. The capacity for this location is 49. Is that correct? Yes, it sir? is. Yes, it okay. is. And so you were having a private party and there was. 213 people at the private party? That's what they, they say that they count. They counted 198, but that's what they, they, they say they counted. I don't know because I wasn't in. But okay, but there was definitely more than 49 people? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, there was. Yes, I'm not, yes, there was. There was. Okay. And what kind of party was this? It was just Father's Day. It was a Father's Day. So we, oh. we gave it to our customers, just a free party. There was um, free food. It was just, but we have never thought that it was going to go over over that. And the security should have never. The same guy, I think the officer is present, present there. He saw that we fired the guy right away. He was fired on the spot because that was ridiculous. All right. So just be, to be clear, it was a private party, but it was opened up to all of your customers? And it was a private, it was for Father's Day, just for like private people. Oh. Not all the crazy, but a lot of people came. But it was private. Did you charge cover charge? No, no, we, did no we did not. No, we did not. So how do you just describe a, a private party? It was just a gift for Father's Day. We put it on the on the on the on the website. Hey, hey guys, uh, we're we're throwing something in for Father's Day. You just come and you can eat for free. That's it. Okay. Um. And what time? What time was the private party from? When to when? For it Father's was from, Day. Uh, from nine to one. Okay. And you're giving away free food and yes, people did. got in for free and they just had to yes, buy yes. alcohol from you? Okay. Um, I mean, this is, a, this is an extremely um, 
serious um, incident. I understand. These are, these are public safety and fire safety issues. I understand. And this board takes this very seriously. Whether you're three people over or I can't do the math, but 200 people over, these are considered very serious issues by the board. I completely understand. I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Karn, any questions? None for me, thank you. None for me, thanks. Thank you, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number four, uh, it is the same licensee, Puente Cleaning Services, Inc., doing business as Biliaris Columbia, located at 28 Bennington Street in East Boston. Date of the incident, June 27th, 2022. Over capacity, crowd gathered outside, obstructing pedestrians in violation of Mass General Laws Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.03J and 1.06A and F. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, Detective James. Thank you. And are there any other individuals uh, with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify? Uh, you have both been sworn in. Detective James, you may please proceed with the police report. Yes. On Monday, June 27, 2022, at approximately 12.02 a.m., a code certified license permit special was completed at Belaris, Columbia, located at 28 Bennington Street. Present during inspection were Sergeant Detective Blass, Sergeant Copany, and Detective James. At the time of the inspection, the person in charge of the establishment was Mary Quintana. At the conclusion of the inspection, Quintana signed for an accepted license per inspection notice 022686. The violation noted were overcapacity, 59 total, capacity 49, and crowd gathered outside obstructing pedestrian. The permits at Belaris, sorry, Belaris, Colombia, list Rigoberto Respripro as the owner of the licensed premise. There's a second a correction. An original incorrect note, original report incorrect note 59 patrons at the time of the present at the bar. But a note is the actual count was 52 people was at the bar at the time of inspection, not 59. A supplemental report was written. Great. Thank you, Detective. Uh, Mr. Granias, once again, would you like to address this alleged violation? Yes, on this one, I would like to address the only three people that were that were more. And um, I don't know if you recall, Mr. Danny, I went and brought you the videos There was I had to call security because I felt it was threatened for my staff, for my people. There was more than a thousand people outside. The police couldn't control it. So I couldn't control it. So I called three extra staff to step outside, to step in the back because they were trying to go everywhere. Every, every single place to go in, they were breaking everything. So that's why I had the three extra staff. I informed the officer that we told them that there was three extra staff because we couldn't do nothing. They were, they, were, they couldn't handle it. They, I, I, I put the video, I brought the video to you guys to your attention. There was more than a thousand people outside. We couldn't handle it. There was nothing we could do. They're trying to go in every single business that they could, it was just a, a whole chaos. Now on this one, yes, that there was nothing I could do. I, the only three people that were, more, it was because there were securities, so that people would not go in the premises. Thank you. Um, Chairman Trace, do you have any questions? Yeah. Um, are you actually saying that um, it, that the three extra people in your premise were the only three people that were in there all night, or this huge crowd outside? Were they inside your premise earlier? No, they were not in my premise. The, 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 the report is maybe incorrect. What happens is when the soccer game goes over and they win, uh, the officers know that they're going to close Bennington Street, the, the pay, uh, patrons, the guys. And there was more than a thousand people outside. There, it wasn't in my business. What I did was I placed three extra security guards because I knew what was going to happen. I know well, I didn't know what was going to happen when it was happening. I told I called my security. I said, "Hey, bring me more people because they were trying to go into business." I said, "No, nobody can come in." The officers know there was nobody in the premises. We were shut down, and I even closed earlier that day because there was nothing we could do. The police couldn't handle them. There was okay, on, on a big on a big night like this, where it sounds like there was a soccer game. How many staff do you usually have? Usually, um, 
if no 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 it's not it's not about the staff they don't even go in our businesses they come from other places from other bars I understand, from but I, i'm trying to wrap my head around the fact how many staff you have working the door front door back door i usually have one person working the, the front and one in the back so you do but have this someone one, who works the back door oh yes yes of course We have front in the one in the front, one in the back, and it was it was we had to get an extra person because there was they, they were trying to go in the business, and I couldn't let them in. Does the person at the front door and the person at the back door have a counter? Yes, they do. Okay. Not the back door. The front door has the back door. There's nobody that goes through the back door. It's just an emergency exit, so nobody comes in or out. Okay. I don't have any other questions. And then, I'm sorry, there is a, a video that I presented to Mr. Danny Green. I send it um, so you guys will see what, what was the crowded outside. What, what time did the soccer game end? Excuse me, sir? What time did the soccer game end? Soccer game ended probably, I want to say, 9 o'clock. And so before that time, you, you didn't have a, a big crowd outside? Oh, no, 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 no. It's only when they win. After they win, they go they go to, to that street. That's the street they take. This happened after midnight, correct? The the crowded people? Uh, yeah, by the time the police are counting, this is after midnight, correct? I I think it was like before 1230, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so what was going on for the, like the three hours from nine to midnight? They come after, they do whatever they do, like they go around in the cars, they, everywhere, and then that's the last place they take. I don't know where they were before, but I know that when the officers were there, they, they had the crowd. You can ask the officer, he was there. There was more than a thousand people right outside celebrating, throwing things, everything. It, it was a whole chaos. And oh. it happens every year. When did a crowd form outside of your business? I want to say probably like around 12 o'clock. And then so right before 12. And then after that, you called the police because you couldn't handle this crowd. They, they, we didn't have to call them. They were already there. Okay. They, they, they're, they're all there. They know what they, the officers in, in C7, they know that this is going to happen. They usually know, and they, they're always right down the corners. Those officers, they had to close the streets. They actually closed the streets. Okay. Thank you. Nothing additional. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. And calling item number five, which is once again, the same licensee, Fuente Cleaning Services, Inc., doing business as Biliaris Columbia, located at 28 Bennington Street in East Boston, date of the incident, July 9th, 2022. Failure to cooperate with police in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.14b, and failure to comply with security plan on file with the licensing board in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. Uh, who's present on behalf of the licensee? Mr. Brian, President Pedanias. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I think Sullivan I'm, should have. Uh, uh, Sullivan is still on. Uh, uh, yes, I do see officers. All. Yep. Yes, sir. Thank you. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of this alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Okay. I'm kind of Troy, if necessary. Thank you. You have all been sworn. Officer Sullivan Venezia, you may please proceed with the report. Okay. Sorry, can you hear me good? Okay, so on Saturday, 7 9 22 at 2 30 hours, officers Miranda and Sullivan Venezia in the Gold 101 Alpha while conducting a Code 19 walk and talk patrol at the location of 28 Bennington Street, East Boston, investigated an on-site illegal possession of a firearm report. While conducting the code 19, sorry. officers Miranda and Selma Venezia were approached by witness Jefferson Francis, whom informed the officers that a man exiting a black Toyota Venza in the parking lot of 34 Bennington Street had dropped a firearm off his waist while exiting the vehicle. The weapon then <clears throat> struck the pavement and the suspect retrieved it, placing it back into his waist. The suspect described as a Hispanic male wearing white shirt then re-entered the vehicle. 
The vehicle was also described as containing a child transport seat in the back of the vehicle passenger side. Upon turning the marked police cruiser around in the opposite direction in order to return to 34 Bennington Street, the suspect and his passengers in his motor vehicle had already exited the parking lot and headed outbound on Bennington Street towards Chelsea. The officers departed in that direction, updating operations channel two dispatch and other officers of this information in an attempt to gain assistance for officer safety. While operating on Bennington Street towards Prescott Street, multiple motor vehicles were obstructing the flow of traffic and the suspect vehicle was not observed by the officers. Witness Francis then arrived on location at Bennington Street and Prescott Street and informed the officers that the suspect vehicle had just driven past them, headed towards Neptune Road. The officers then proceeded towards Neptune Road when the witness directly pulled up alongside the police vehicle and pointed out the suspect vehicle as and made a right turn onto Neptune Road and then onto Bremen Street between Bennington Street and Neptune Road. The exact location, location was 464 Bremen Street. Officer Craig Jones in the Gold 415 Alpha unit assisted the Gold 101 officers by pulling onto Bennington Street where Bremen Street intersects. Officers in the Gold 101 unit stopped on Bennington Street and exited their motor vehicle. The front passenger, <clears throat> sorry, the front seat passenger described as a Hispanic male wearing white tank top, black shorts and tan shoulder carried purse, exited the motor vehicle and briefly approached the trunk of the suspect vehicle Mass Reg one Yankee Charlie Nora 99. With three occupants still occupying the suspect vehicle, the prior passenger suspect was approaching the trunk area. Officer Jones directed the driver of the suspect vehicle to stop, don't move while at gunpoint. With Officer Sullivan Venezia positioned behind the vehicle with weapons drawn at gunpoint and Officer Miranda positioned to the left side of the suspect vehicle also with weapon drawn at gunpoint. Also yelling commands. Upon being directed to stop by Officer Jones, the operator later identified by Officer Sullivan Venezia as Mario Joseph Menstanza Morin, date of birth 8-31-96, placed the vehicle into reverse and sped backwards in an attempt to evade the police, refusing to stop and actually striking his former passenger that had just exited the motor vehicle. Officer Sullivan Venezia directly witnessed the operator strike the former passenger who was wearing the white tank top on his right shoulder in arm area with the rear of the vehicle. <clears throat> At that time, in addition to striking his former passenger, the operator struck a parked vehicle, Mass Reg, one Echo Echo Juliet 2-3 with the passenger side door as it was still open. In turn, the passenger side door was damaged and possibly would not shut as the operator drove away with the door fully open. Victim vehicle, suffered front end damage to bumper and left side panel. The operator slash suspect, Morin, then ducked below the dashboard and sped directly at Officer Jones, forcing him to jump out of the way of the fleeing vehicle or be struck and possibly killed. The operator then left the scene of property damage at a very high rate of speed. The officers then re-entered their marked police cruisers and attempted to locate the suspect vehicle to no avail as it fled in the direction of Bennington then right onto Chelsea Street towards Chelsea. Failing to stop for stop signs at Bennington Street and Chelsea Street, operating reckless and at a high, <clears throat> sorry, a very high rate of speed. Officers then returned to the location of the stop to speak with the witness, during which time a cell phone was located on the ground in front of the parked vehicle that was struck. The cell phone was photographed in the, with department camera, Officer Miranda, in the position it was located before being seized as evidence. Upon picking it up, the screen was active with 85720, sorry, it's just a phone number, displayed multiple times, approximately 10, 15, including Facebook, FaceTime calls. The witness further informed the officers that the one suspect who had exited the suspect vehicle at Neptune Road and Benting Street was also wearing an ankle GPS monitoring bracelet. The witness further informed the officers that the suspects were observed by him previously inside of Biliaris, Columbia at 28 Bennington Street, possibly by the DJ booth. The witness previously called 911 to report the registration plate of the suspect vehicle. Officer Selim Venezia contacted Channel 2 Dispatch and retrieved the suspect registration plate and performed a seizure inquiry, at which time the registered owner came back to Sydney Lorena Hernandez Velasquez, DOB 121495 of 12 Beacon Street, Burlington, Mass. 
Officer Sullivan Venezia then contact operations channel two to have the operator contact Burlington, Chelsea, Rivera and Winthrop police departments of this information for officer safety. The cell phone described as a black Apple iPhone was logged in as evidence at district A7 logbook number 2022, page 74. Upon returning to district A7, officer Monroe and the goal 201 Frank informed officer Selvin Venezia that Burlington police were currently on the station telephone. Officer Selvin Venezia then spoke with Lieutenant Kevin Cooney of Burlington PD, who informed him that the same suspect vehicle and registration number was involved in a hit and run accident in 2021 in the town of Medford, at which time the driver of the vehicle was the registered owner's boyfriend, suspect Mario Joseph Mestanza Moran. The lieutenant informed the officer that the last involved information they had at the time was the suspect address of 298 American Legion Highway in Rivera, Mass. Officer Selvin Venezia then contacted the Medford Police Department and was transferred to their dispatch operator who was already aware of this ongoing incident. The operator then informed this officer of the suspect's name, date of birth, and address to be 298 American Legion Highway, Rivera. A seizures inquiry was made by Officer Selvin Venezia at which time the suspect's information was confirmed by the officer who had a clear view of the operator and matched it as the same during this incident. The status of the operator slash suspect Morin was listed as having a suspended license via mass registry of motor vehicles, chapter 90, section 23. The following offenses were observed by the officers, speeding, mass general law, chapter 90, section 17, stop sign violation, mass general law, chapter 89, nine, Reckless operation, motor vehicle, Mass General Law, Chapter 9024. Failure to stop for police officer, Mass General Law, Chapter 9025. Operation of motor vehicle after suspension, Chapter 9023. Leaving the scene of an accident resulting in property damage, Mass General Law, Chapter 9024. Assault by means of a dangerous weapon to wit motor vehicle, Mass General Law 265-15B. Suspect Menstanza Moran was issued mass uniform citation number T3102202 and T3102203 for the violations of auto laws offenses. The suspect was also be summoned directly by the Gold 101 Alpha Unit officers for his criminal offenses to include the non Chapter 90 violation of assault by means of a dangerous weapon to wit motor vehicle. The owner of the suspect. Vehicle suspect Hernandez Velasquez was issued mass uniform citation T3102201 for knowingly allowing an unlicensed person to operate her motor vehicle, chapter 90, section 12. The suspect will also be summoned by the Gold 101 unit directly. That's the end. Thank you, officer. And there is a, an additional report as well. Um, will you be reading that or will that be Lieutenant Trey? Um, Oh, she ain't here today. You don't right? have a, 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 oh, I'll come back to that. <laughs> right, see no problem. Um, there's an additional report, license premise violation authored by uh, Sergeant Detective Manny Blass. And it reads as follows. On, third, uh, on Thursday, July 14, 2022, at 9.13 p.m., a license premise inspection code 35 was com uh, completed at Billard's Columbia, located at 28 Bennington Street. Present during the inspection were Detective Montesino, Detective Samaras, and Sergeant Detective Blass. Employees present inside the establishment reported the person in charge uh, was not present at the time in the premises. Uh, the Code 35 at Pillars Columbia was initiated because Detective Montesino had established communication with Fernie Pernez uh, and requested surveillance video from the establishment regarding a previous incident. These requests of video were made on July 9th. July 12th, July 13th, and July 14th. At the time of the inspection, the video had not been provided. The video was uh, requested to be made in furtherance of a firearm related investigation involving an incident that occurred on July 9, 2022. During their investigation, detectives learned that the suspect in the firearm related incident had been a patron of Pillows, Columbia on the night of the incident. The video would have made great utility in investigating the matter that involved the threat to public safety. Detectives were aware that the City of Boston Licensing Board established a security agreement in 2018 with Billets Columbia. Noted in the agreement was, we will possess and use recording cameras with sufficient storage for up to 31 days at our establishment. In the event that an incident that the establishment requires any involvement with police, camera footage will be preserved indefinitely. All camera footage 
will be made available to the police upon request. And that's the end of the quoted agreement. During the inspection, officers noted that there were four individuals seated in the outdoor patio that was located in the rear of the property. Detectives noted that there were beverages on the table. These individuals informed detectives that they were guests of the family of Paola. Uh, detectives were familiar with Paola from, from past inspections at Bohemia's restaurant located at 30 Bennington Street. Paola has been identified as the person in charge of that establishment during those past interactions. Paola exited Bohemia's and joined detectives in the rear of in the rear patio, where she confirmed that the individuals seated in the patio area were her guests. It should be noted that the outdoor patio could be accessed through the rear of both Villards Columbia and Bohemia's. Paola informed uh, was informed that Villards Columbia did not have a person in charge on site. She explained that although she was uh, she was no longer employed by either business, she would accept the violation notice the detectives intended to complete. The licensed premise inspection number 42506 was completed by Sergeant Detective Glass. The violations noted were surveillance video not provided to the BPD in violation of 2018 security agreement and no person in charge on the premises. Paola and Andrea signed for accepted this notice. As detectives departed the property, they were met by Fernie Pernez, uh, he stated that he was made aware of the aforementioned violations. Bernie informed Detective Montesino that he would provide him video requested uh, the following day. And just from the detective's case notes here, the uh, video was provided on July 17th, uh, uh, WhatsApp cell phone video was provided to the detective. Uh, and that's the extent of the incident report. Thank you very much, Mr. Perennials. Would you like to address um, this violation? Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think there's a big mistake because I, I did provide him Mr. Montesino the same day I, as I was walking in. I came and I spoke to him. I said, hey, because uh, I was in my house and I, and they told me that they were there. So as I got there, he said, oh, I need the video. I said, right away. I'm sending it to you right now. Just it was, we don't have the video there. We got to record it. As he said, we have to record it for 31 days, but we don't have access to it. So because if we had access to it, they could take it, so we have it on 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 a, on a drive. It's not even on the drive on the on the Google thing, and that's what happened. So I told him, "Yeah, no problem. I'm gonna give it to you." And as as he informed me, the the, the people that they're saying that there was from the from Bijadis, they were not there. And I helped them since day one. Day one, I told them, I said, "Do you guys need the videos?" I have them because I knew the people weren't there. So I did I did cooperate, and he made some intrusinos. Actually said, don't worry about this violation. This is gonna go away. This is nothing. We you, you did help us. So is Mr. Montesino then? Is he in the in the is he in right now? Excuse me. Okay. Sorry, who are you going to? I, I don't believe you here. De Detective Montesino, he said he informed me that there was no violation, that they it was just because I was just coming in. I mean, I live in Riviera, all the way to East Boston. I know they got to do. So that's why they left me. But he said, don't worry. You, you gave me the video. This is all set. I brought him the video the same day of the 14th. Okay, that, that was not communicated to the board or included in the- in I don't the know why, because I, I did cooperate. And Mr. McCino Mr. 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 can um, actually verify that. So that was the 14th. What about the 9th, 12th, 13th? The, excuse me? No, they only came on the 14th. They came on the 14th to ask for the video. The report says that they came, they requested it on the 9th, the 12th, and the 13th. Uh, they spoke to me on the 14th, and that same day I gave them the video. That same day. And Mr. Montesinos could cooperate, cooperate, with, uh, cooperate with that. I did. They, that was the day they spoke to me. I even have it on record that I sent them the videos that same day. Thank you. Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions? Yeah, what did you just say? You have it on. You have a, you have a record that you sent the video on the same day it was requested. On the 14th, but it was I think the 14th was a, a Monday, if I'm not mistaken. I think the this police report says they didn't receive it until the 17th. No, they, uh, give me one quick second. No, I made your woman choice. 
Same same day. It was it was actually within hours. I was repo I was uh, the only thing I took me was half an hour to get to the person who who has my videos, and we sent them to him right away. It was the same day. And Mr. Mr. Montesino could cooperate with that because I spoke to him after he said thank you, and I said, "Do you guys need any other videos?" He said, "No, we're all set." Okay. Any further questions from the board? From um, uh, so, can you please explain to me um, the use of the outdoor patio? No, I don't have nothing to do with that. I don't have okay, outdoor patio. Sorry, but Paula, Paula um, used to work for you. She, yeah, long time ago. Okay, she's my sister. Okay, so her family was sitting on the outdoor patio. Yeah, but not through as, as as it was mentioned on the on the on the report. They, they you it's it's the back. It's it's a it's a yard, but the mm -hmm. the patio is from from Bohemios, not from Bijadis. But okay. you have access, but we don't we don't use it. Okay, and but Bohem Bohemios has permit. Okay, and are you familiar with the, all the details of the security agreement from two thousand eighteen? We are. You are okay. I just want to remind you that when part of that agreement states that when the camera footage is requested by the police, you need to submit it and make it available. No, I did submit it. Okay. I didn't even think I did I I wasn't aware of it, of this thing, but yes, you can see it says as detectives departed the property, they were they met with Fernie. He was made aware, and then right away Montesinos. And that same day, I provided to him, like, it was, like, within hours. I said, let me go to my camera guy, and I'll be with you within hours. And he had it within hours. Okay, so do you re do you remember, uh, Mr. Fernie, do you remember the detective making contact with you before July 14th regarding never, this incident? Never did. Never okay. did. I was informed with the, from the officer that same day. One of the officers said, um, we had an incident uh, of, a, of a gun and or something. They and they said we'll be back to get your footage. And I said no problem. We have them. Okay. All right. Um, at this point, I don't have any other questions. I'll pass over to the other commissioners. I think more in the way of a comment for Bernie. Um, yes, sir. Seems like at the time that the police officers on the 14th arrived, there was no. Uh, official person left in charge, right? No one who could, you need to have at all times someone there that's going to, for example, on maybe on the 9th or the 12th, take a message from the police and get it to you reliably. They okay. always have someone with sufficient authority that the police can show up. And if they have a message, it has to get to you. Yes, sir. We have, we have worked on that. Just, we had, couple of people who didn't speak English, but now we always make sure that one person at least speaks English at the time that uh, they're working. And if there's a language barrier, they need to they need to get that through to the police and, and get that taken care of. Yes, so sir. It's it through and it gets to you. Yes, sir. Sometimes it has to be someone with sufficient authority and responsibility that they can communicate what they need and it has to get to the right person, it, it, you know? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and even even with a, a language barrier, you can always use like Google Translate or, you know, there's plenty of apps where you can you can translate in real time. No, no I know. I already told them that they, they always got to be somebody who I'd rather just have somebody that speaks English every time. So that's what we're doing now. But usually so there's always somebody there. But now we know. Um, okay. No, just. Please, yeah, go ahead, um, Lieutenant. Um, just looking through the detective's case notes here, and uh, I see uh, several notes here, but one in particular that says, uh, which was written by Detective Montesino on 7-13, that would have been Wednesday, July 17th at uh, 8.47, and it notes Detective Montesino made three attempts to recover video at 28 Bennington Street by the owner to no avail. The owner stated that he would contact Detective Montesino by July 13, 2022, which is that day, which is the third third attempt to review and obtain video. A message was left from him on, uh, at 
on July 13th at 8.50. Uh, and there was previous attempts. And then the final uh, entry, uh, another entry here um, on Thursday, July 17th at 10.17 p.m., Detective Montesino received via, depart via his department video uh, phone video from one o'clock to 2 a.m. from the owner of Villard's Columbia 20 Bennington Street. Video was sent uh, via WhatsApp video to review. So that was some eight days after the, uh, after the actual event and repeated the requests. Thank you, Lieutenant. Mr. Fernie, um, I just want to remind you, you know, if, if you're aware of an incident that occurs um, at your licensed establishment, you should automatically make sure that video is preserved in case something comes up that could be helpful to the police. This helps solve crimes. And um, the video goes a long way towards cooperating with an investigation. That's, and it's only because the same words were said by Mr. Montesinos and, and those were exact words that he said. And I said, yes, that's why I'm trying to get you the video. And I got him the video. I don't know why they keep saying that it's the 17. I know the video was sent to 14. That same day that he came, that he saw me outside within hours, I'm telling you, like two, one hour that takes me to go to the place which, with, where the guy does my cameras. And that same time I was sending the video. All right. I don't have any other questions. Do you have anything further from the board? Board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you so much. Calling item number six, Bennington 1004 LLC, doing business as Renegades Pub, located at 1004 Bennington Street in East Boston. Date of the incident, July 9th, 2022. Patron on employee assault and battery in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, 13A. And patron on patron assault and battery in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kristen Scanlon representing the licensee. Signed on with us this morning is also Peter Ackerman, who is the owner of the uh, licensed premises. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Sorry, Sergeant Leonardo Hernandez. Officer Salem Venezia as well. Great. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? You all please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I guess. Thank you very much. Sergeant, you may please proceed with the police report. Uh, Sir Officer uh, Sullivan Venezia, who was one of the original responding officers, will read from the report. Great. Thank you. Uh, just a fair warning. That there's a lot of vulgar and derogatory statements made by the suspect that's written in the report. So just a fair warning. So on Saturday, 7 9 22 at 1803 hours, officers Mirando and Sullivan Venezia in the Gold 101 Frank unit responded to a 911 call to investigate person at Renegades Bar, 1004 Bennington Street, East Boston. While en route, the officers were further informed that the suspect, described as a female in her 50s, uh, in quotation, is attacking everyone and hitting people, and is also, in quotation, throwing bottles at everyone. On arrival, the officers were met by employee Vanik Hakobian, who was holding the front glass entrance door open while waving the police officers to enter. With body-worn cameras activated, the officers then entered the establishment to view the owner, Katie Daly, physically restraining the later identified suspect, Gina Izzo, by her weight, sorry, by her wrist. Officers Mirando then relieved the owner of custody of the suspect and, could, and took custody control of her in an attempt to prevent anyone from being harmed. Officer Mirando only took control of the suspect's wrist and attempted to de-escalate her while she was very aggressive and verbally assaultive towards all persons present. Officer Mirando released the suspect's wrist and informed her that she would be restrained and possibly arrested if she continued to be assaultive. Within moments, the suspect raised her hand. It became potentially dangerous, forcing the officer to place her into handcuffs and remove her from establishment for the safety of all persons present. Officer Sullivan Venezia, assisted by Officer Noel and the Gold 416 Frank unit, escorted the female suspect out of the establishment, at which time she allowed her body to go limp, forcing off both officers to then pick her up and carry her to the, her, to the marked police cruiser. 
Once inside of the cruiser, the suspect kicked the vehicle's door, preventing the officers from shutting the door, then placed her foot in the wedge of the door, again, preventing the officers from shutting the vehicle's door. The officers were then forced to remove the suspect's foot from the door in order to secure the suspect inside safely. Inside of the establishment, the officers were informed by witness, caller Joseph Przinski, that suspect Izzo threw a cream ale, 12 ounce bear can at multiple customers and employees while they were attempting to restrain her. The suspect further pushed two, three tables, displacing them from their original locations. The tables were being returned to their original locations in the presence of the officers with spilled beer also present on the tables and surrounding floor areas. Victim slash employee, Vinick Hokobian, informed the officers that he was originally attempting to prevent the heavily intoxicated suspect from departing in her motor vehicle to safeguard her in the general public. In doing so, employee Hokobian used his body to obstruct the exit door. The suspect then grabbed him by his throat with one hand until she was removed by owner Katie Daly. Upon being removed, the suspect turned and choked victim Daly also with one hand on her throat. Victim Daly then managed to remove the grasp of the suspect from her throat and hold her wrist until the officers arrived on scene and took custody of her. The officers offered both victims a response via Boston EMS to which both victims refused Boston, um, medical attention. While interviewing the employees and customers, Officer Noel re-entered the establishment to inform the officers that the suspect was then kicking the police cruiser doors in barred window area. The Gold 910, Sergeant Hernandez, was on scene and directed the Gold 201 unit, Officers Nepomuceno Mateo and Nedio, who took custody of the female suspect and transported her to District A1 for booking. Officer Marifiotti and the Gold 425 Frank unit also assisted on location. It should be known while being transported with the body worn cameras activated, the suspect stated in quotation, you fucking black niggers. And in quotation, your brother nigger will die in a tree multiple times. These statements were being directed towards the transporting officers, Nepomuceno Mateo and Nedio. Witness Przinski informed the officers that the suspect had been on location since approximately 3 p.m. drinking alcohol, beverages, while doing so, the suspect was accompanied by her small dog. Concerned for the well being of the dog, while the suspect was under arrest, the officers attempted to first relocate the dog with the suspect's permission to the custody of a friend. But the suspect was extremely uncooperative on location and also at booking when the officers attempted to again do so. The Gold 101 Frank unit officers then returned to their police cruiser with the dog to transport it to District A7 pending the arrival of Boston Animal Control, at which time Officer Miranda observed and took custody of a golden colored watch and wallet that was left in the rear seat. Officer Miranda then opened the wallet in the presence of Officer Sullivan Venezia and observed the identification of the suspect as Gina Izzo. The wallet also, was also, contained, what, <clears throat> the, the wallet also contained what appeared to be a large amount of U.S. currency. This information was relayed to Sergeant Hernandez and the officers in the Gold 101 Frank unit then transported the watch and wallet with identification and cash to District A1 to be included with the prisoner's property. It should be known while being transported, the suspect also moved her handcuffs from the previous location where they were properly placed behind her back by Officer Miranda to the front of her body. The suspect as well kicked the rear windows of the Gold 201 Frank assigned police vehicle. At booking, Officer Miranda and Sullivan Venezia took over the booking process in an attempt to relieve Officers Nepomuceno, Mateo, and Nedio from receiving further deplorable, racially discriminatory remarks. While on body-worn cameras, the officers captured the suspect at booking state, in quotation, you fucking Puerto Rican cunt to Officer Crespo, and in quotations, it's okay to hang a nigger from a tree, but it's not okay to hang a dog to Officer Jordan Wells. Officers Miranda and Sullivan Venezia were also called, in quotation, white niggers. Further, during booking, suspect prisoner Izzo kicked the glass, plexiglass at booking several times, attempting to break it to no avail. Refusing cooperative booking due to her actions, violence, and excessively loud screaming, the prisoner forced the combined efforts of four officers to take control of her arms and legs and carry her to the female holding cell. 
It should be noted the suspect continued to scream profanity and, <clears throat> and racial statements toward officers at District A1 while inside the booking cell, preventing officers from con conducting their police report and speaking to the general public in a need of assistance over the phone. Boston Animal Control Officer Monroe, badge number 110, took custody of the dog at District A7 and transported it to the location of 26 Mowler Road in Rosendale, phone number 617-635-1800. As a result of the incident and Code 35 violation, Premise inspection notice was conducted. Citation number 042552 was issued by the Gold 910 Sergeant Hernandez to owner Katie Daly. Common Victoria license number LB202196 and entertainment license number CAL3341455 noted. The Boston Police Civil Rights Unit and also to the city of Boston license boards will be notified. That's it. Thank you very much, officer. Um, You're Attorney welcome. Scanlon, would you like to address the incident? Yes, please, thanks. Uh, just a couple of questions for officer um, Sullivan Venezia. Um, staff for the licensed premises called 911 to this location, correct? Correct. And upon your arrival, were staff cooperative with you and um, other officers? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, I, I believe the majority of the uh, report speaks for itself, but of course can provide further detail regarding the circumstances around this incident. Um, Mr. Hakopian, Vanik, who is the employee reference in the police report is unable to uh, attend this hearing, but we certainly can provide an affidavit from him if the board feels it's um, necessary following today's hearing and viewing of the video that we'll provide um, based on his firsthand knowledge and, and involvement in this event. Um, this particular patron or suspect um, is, has been known to staff at the licensed premises for quite some time. They have had a friendly relationship with her in the past, um, somewhat of a regular, never any incident with her prior. Uh, this particular day, she was on the premises for approximately three hours. We do have her tab, which we'll provide to the board, which indicates the approximate three hours around 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And that during that time, she um, ordered three cocktails as well as a meal within those three hours. Um, the video footage of the incident, uh, as you'll see, um, this all began, and, and again, based on uh, Mr. Hagopian's experience in the industry and previous knowledge of the patron, um, it was brought to their attention when she went to leave um, early that evening that she appeared unsteady on her feet and um, frankly, un under the influence and in their best judgment, not safe to operate a motor vehicle. They were aware that she lives in a different neighborhood in Boston and, and usually uh, drove to this establishment um, when she was there. Uh, Vanik had just arrived for a shift shortly before 6 p.m. where he's been an employee since 2018. Um, it was not busy that evening at all. There's only three patrons, three other patrons in the premises at that time of the incident. Um, the suspect had just paid her tab and uh, Ms. Daly, who's also referenced as an employee owner um, in the report, although she's no longer with the company, um, told Mr. Hagopian that he thought, or she thought the suspect was unfit to drive. Um, as the report states, Vanik uh, obstructed the door with his body, as you'll, sh as you'll see on the video. He asked the suspect for her, her keys repeatedly um, and even offered repeatedly to call an Uber to safely transport her home. Um, without warning, the suspect grabbed at um, Vanique's throat. He did not engage. She simply backed away and continued to essentially stand guard at the door so she wasn't allowed to leave. Um, during this time, she did drop her keys and he picked them up off the floor and secured them um, and prior to police arriving. Um, the timeline of this incident it is she paid her tab at approximately 556 
at 559, you'll see that um, she's shown talking to Vanique and Katie who are trying to reason with her just to hand over her keys, not to leave. Um, it's a calm interaction. And um, at 601, that's when, again, the suspect, um, well, she goes back to sit at the bar and then at 602 tries to leave again. Um, and that is when she went for Mr. Um, Hacopian's throat. In the meantime, in these three minutes, Katie Daly had already called 911 prior to any altercation occurring, um, suspecting they, they might have an issue and wanted to, to obviously transfer her safely home before there is an issue um, prior to her attacking uh, the staff. Um, other patrons, as you'll see, um, also try to block her calmly and get involved. Um, and they end up intervening and de-escalating it for a time until the suspect again starts um, banging on the walls of the establishment. Um, and another patron restrains her from behind. They scuffle, she throws a beer um, and Ms. Daly's restraining the um, suspect from behind when the police arrive at approximately 610. Um, as you know, from the record of this licensed establishment, there's no history of violations at this location. Again, the staff was familiar, um, quite familiar with this suspect, never any incident with her. Um, frankly, wasn't foreseeable that she would become irate when they were trying to secure her, other patrons and the general public um, from leaving and causing um, any potential injury due to, due to her state. Um, staff did everything they could under, under the circumstances to keep people safe and de-escalate the situation, called police immediately. I believe they might have even called twice in the period of time, just once the, once the situation escalated to make sure someone was definitely on their way because it had been escalated, um, but wanted to call before any altercation even occurred initially. Um, Mr. Ackerman, who is the current owner, he um, was not on scene, but certainly interviewed his employees and reviewed the tape, and we both can answer any questions that the board might have regarding this incident. Thank you, Attorney Scanlon. Um, Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions for the licensee? Just one question. Did anything happen previous to, um, in the, in the, first three, two and a half hours she was there that would have raised concerns by staff that something might have happened? No, it was very uneventful the entire time she was there until she, she went to leave. Okay. And um, do you still have that video? Is that something you could share with us? I do. We'll send that over. Right. I don't have any other questions. I don't either. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Saxon. No questions from me. Thank you. Great. Thank you. The board will take this under advisement um, and we'll uh, wait for that video from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number seven, Arguedas Corporation, located at 30 Bennington Street in East Boston. Date of the incident, July 16th, 2022. Assault and battery, patron on patron, serious injury in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? I'm just going to be a translator. Okay, thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Officer Cunningham. Thank you. And are there any Detect other individuals? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Detective Espino. Thank you, Detective. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Um, Officer, will you be proceeding with the police report? Yes. Thank you. On Friday, July 16th, 2022, at about 2.58 a.m., Officer Cunningham in the Gold 425 Alpha Unit responded to the East Boston Health Center at 10 Gold Street, East Boston, for an assault and battery report. Upon arrival, the officer spoke with the victim, Fernie Bustamante, who appeared to be intoxicated, through the Spanish interpreter and medical assistant, Jessica Ayala. 
Fernie stated while outside 28 Bennington Street, he was punched in the nose by the suspect, Camilo Marino. The victim stated that the dispute was over a female that he had a relationship with in the past. The victim had blood on his face and hands uh, from his nose that was bleeding. He was informed that a police report would be filed and he could, could apply for criminal complaints for assault and battery against a suspect in East Boston District Court. The, ex the extent of the victim's nose injury was not determined at that time. Uh, a body-worn camera was activated. That's the end of the narrative. Uh, thank you. We have a supplemental report as well. Yes. That's from Detective Espino. Ah, great. Thank you. Um, I'll be reading from the supplemental report um, authored by me. On 7-26-2022, Detective Espino on the Gold 816 initiated an investigation to an assault and battery that occurred in the 8 area of 28 Bennington Street, East Boston. On 718, 2022, Detective Espino and police officer Crespo spoke to the victim, Ferne Pusamante Cortez, at A7. The victim stayed the night of the incident. He was inside Billiards, Columbia, located at 28 Bennington Street. The victim said he was drinking with a friend when a friend invited him to move next door to Bohemio's restaurant located at 30 Bennington Street. The victim said that while in Bohemio's, he observed the suspects. The victim said the suspects were friends of his friend. The victim said that he did greet the suspects while in the restaurant. The victim said while in the restaurant, the suspect, Mateo Barrentos Mahia, pushed him. The victim said he'd left the restaurant shortly after that. The victim stated that while he was outside, he observed the suspects leave the restaurant and walk outbound on Bennington Street, passing the parking lot adjacent to the restaurant. The victim said, well, he was waiting outside 20 to 30 Bennington Street, the suspect turned around and attacked him. The victim said the suspect punched him multiple times, causing him to fall to the ground. The victim said he was also kicked several times by the suspect while on the ground. The victim told officers that the suspects were yelling profanities at him during the incident. The victim said he did lose conscious while being attacked. The victim said he walked straight to the health clinic located at 10 Gold Street after the attack. The victim believes he was attacked due to the suspect, Mateo Barantos Mejia, being in a relationship with his ex-wife. The victim described the first suspect as Camille Moreno and stated he lives in Winter Mass. The victim showed officers the suspect, suspect's Facebook page. The, the Facebook page did have a birthday of December 3rd. Officer did lo locate Camille Moreno Morales in Sejas with a date of birth of 12387. The victim described the suspect of a tail Barentos Mejia. The victim said the suspect lives at 103 Walkway Lynn. The victim provided a Facebook page of the suspect. The Facebook page of the suspect had a date of birth 11 9 Officers located vehicles registered to the suspect in Sejas that matched the date of birth of the address. Detective Espino did take photos of the victim's face while he was in District A7. The victim stated that he was told by doctors that his nose was broken. Swelling was no noticeable around the victim's nose. Complaints will be signed in East Boston Court for assault and battery, serious bodily injury, and assault and battery, dangerous weapon, shot foot for both of the suspects. Also on 7 18, 2022, Detective Espino, assisted, with, assisted by Detective Samaras, conducted a Code 35 mm -hmm. license premise shot at Bohemios mm -hmm. Restaurant, located at 30 Bennington Street. <laughs> at the time of the inspection, the person in charge of the establishment was Lucille Perennis. At the conclusion of the inspection, Perennis signed and accepted the license premise inspection notice 023727. The violation notice was on patron, on patron assault and battery. Perennis was also directed to preserve any video from 7-16-2022 from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, that is the end of my report. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Pranias, Mr. Pranias, would you like to address the alleged violation? Yes. Um, mommy, it's away in the family. Yeah, we would I was there that day too. I was there. This happened after like two, two twenty. Uh, everything was closed. We were already closed and there was a fight outside. We went outside to see the fight and the officers were there. It, so I don't I, maybe because it was outside, we got violated. I don't know because that this the officers were there. The, all the officers were there and they they stopped the fight. We don't know nothing about what happened afterwards or nothing. We already closed. <clears throat> all right, thank you. Is there anything further you wanted to add or was that all? 
Yeah, no, that's all. Okay, thank you. We'll turn it to the board. Um, Chairman Drace, do you have any questions? Oh, I do. Um, on this particular night when this alleged assault and battery happened, how many um, people did you have inside the bar? ¿Cuántos habían en su lugar? No había mucho. ¿Por qué cuánto? Ese día. Por el 20. Por el 20. Like, like 20, 25 people. Mm. And how many staff did you have? ¿Cuántos empleados tenía? Four. Four. Okay. And did, are, you, is, um, are you familiar with the victim and the suspect? Usted conoce al, al víctima, a Bernay. Sí, mm -hmm. a Bernay. No, a Bernay. No, a Bernay. Yeah, with, she knows uh, Verientos. Okay. But, no, no, wait, she's not saying, no, no, que si no lo ha visto, que si lo conoce, el que siempre va a subir ya. Also, we, she knows both vict uh, the victim and the other person. Both. And I'm sorry, who called the police here? No, the police were outside. Oh, they're outside. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I ask why the police were outside? They're always outside from from 150, 145 to 230. Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions at this time. Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon. I don't. No, thank you. Nothing from me. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further from the chair? Or is that or? Um, so yeah, just another question. Are you saying that the fight did not happen inside? No, 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 no. We were close. This happened. This happened like around two, two twenty, two thirty. Okay. So you're, but there was um, still twenty people inside. Oh no, no, no. You asked us how many people were inside prior to that. No, no, no. It was close. No. Like it was only but we the, were just um, doing the closing. The victim says that the fight started inside and then he was pushed outside. No, 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 no. outside. No, there was no incident inside whatsoever. Nothing. There was no fight inside, no okay. whatsoever. Okay, thank you. Thank you, anything further from the board? Or we'll take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Calling item number eight, AF Pizza LLC doing business as Red Line Pizza located at 580 to 582 Dorchester Ave in South Boston, dated the incident February 23rd, 2022. Premise operating after posted 11 p.m. closing, 1250 a.m. in violation of Master Laws Chapter 140, Section 9. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Is anybody present on behalf of Red Line Pizza? We will take a second call for the record. Um, this actually was continued from the June 30th violation hearing where the licensee failed to appear. So we will try to get in touch with them and get them to show up. Calling item number nine, Dan Res Corporation doing business as La Chiva Restaurant, located at 259 Bennington Street in East Boston. Date of the incident, July 6th, 2022, customer bringing alcohol onto patio in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 140, Section 9. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, is anybody present on behalf of La Chiva? Yes, sir. Um, the manager of Rodrigo and Julio. Great, thank you. And uh, sorry, could you please both identify yourselves? Um, the manager partner of La Chiva Restaurant. And I'm the landlord of the property since 1977. My name is Renato D'Amico. Great, thank you. And who's present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I am. Dr. Hernandez, thank you. Are there any <clears throat> other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes, I do. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez, please proceed with the police report. <clears throat> Good morning. I'll be reading uh, from a police report, which is written by uh, Sergeant Gallier on 7-9-2022 uh, at about 
10, 27 p.m. Sorry, Detective William Gallagher, Detective Eddie Hernandez assigned to the BPD License Premise Unit, conducted a license premise inspection of La Chiva at 259 Bennington Street in East Boston. The inspection came about because of a complaint received at City Hall of the premise staying open till 3 a.m. with disruptive behavior by patrons affecting the quality of life for neighbors. As detectives entered the premise, they observed a female patron drinking from an open glass container of alcohol. Detectives know La Chiva does not possess an alcohol license. Inside the premise, detectives spoke to manager Andres Philippe. Detectives informed him for the reason of their visit and showed him the patron drinking alcohol on the patio. Mr. Philippe took immediate corrective action and had the patron close and secure the bottle. Mr. Philippe said they usually have an employee monitor the patio for such instances. While reviewing La Chiva's permit, detectives observed that, the, that their license LB38286 is a 24 hour license. Mr. Philippe stated they only stay open until 3 a.m. As a result of what detectives observed, signed Detective Gallagher issued license permit inspection 043189 to La Chiva for a customer drinking, bringing alcohol onto the <laughs> patio. Mr. Philippe signed and accepted for the notice. That's all. All right. Thank you very much. Um, the, would the licensee like to address the alleged incident? Well, um, what I understood, I wasn't there that night, and what I understood, a lady opened, I don't know what kind of beer, because um, I wasn't sure it was a beer or something, but the police was coming right direct to her at that moment. So they told her to stop. I, I don't sell alcohol in the restaurant. That's the party who's in front of the restaurant. I keep control of it, uh, but at that moment, when that happens, we were really busy at the night. Uh, we get all, they come to my restaurants, I only say hamburgers and take out food, uh, chicken wings or whatever, so it's very fast. And I get two, 300 people in a Friday, Saturday and Sunday, the three busy days. And it was, that night was a Saturday, so it was busy. <laughs> So when that lady opened that can, we were too busy to see at the moment, but the police was there. So thank God they were there and they always cooperate with us. I mean, they do a beautiful job. The police is always around the restaurant, which I appreciate. I want to thank the police department. I've been there for 20 years, but we do not sell alcohol in our place. She came, I don't know where she came from that. Like I said, there's so many bars that close at two in the morning. They come to my place and they drink over there. I mean, not, they eat over there, but I already put signs in the property, not eating it outside the restaurant because I want to cooperate with the neighborhood. Uh, I don't want to be a bad neighborhood, uh, a bad owner, you yeah, know what I mean? So I cooperate, I have signs, I have uh, security on the weekends. So I don't know if the, the, they can apply to that. I have security. so. So I do my best, but I sometimes, uh, I mean, I cannot control that a person open up beer in front of the party of my restaurant because it's right in the street. It's right between Bennington and Chelsea Street. So it's very crowded, like I say, could be maybe a hundred people hanging around there. I already put signs. You cannot stay there. You cannot eat here. You're supposed to go home, but um, I mean, it's, it's life. It's just like people go there with a few drinks and they want to eat there, they want to have a conversation there. So it's, it's not an easy thing to do, but I, I keep my best. I, I, I understand. Just, just, for the, just for the statement, the violation was customer bring alcohol onto the patio. So that customer went to their car, grabbed the can of whatever, or grabbed whatever alcohol they had and brought it onto the patio. It did not come out of the store. It came out. It came out of their car. Oh, this... I, I believe that. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm just. I'll jump in right now. Um, the uh, licensee is still responsible for people whether or not they bring their own alcohol from their car, from a nearby store, or from inside. So it doesn't matter. And you have to do more than just try your best to make sure that there's no alcohol in these patios. No matter how crowded it is, you will be held responsible, and you will. Um, continue to be brought before the board should they find that there's people drinking alcohol in your patio. You're not licensed for alcohol. So it's not okay that someone brought it in on their own. You need to have to be properly staffed to ensure that your patrons are not bringing alcohol onto your patio. Now, is this patio that you're describing 
in front of your license premise or in back of your license premise? I'm not familiar. In front. Is it part of your license? Before it's it, part yeah, of the temporary it, program. License. No, it's, I have license for that patio. It's it's on my property. It's been okay, a, but I want to know is it on your license? It's been this since yes. 1963. It's been fathered in the grandfather in since uh, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Okay, and on a night like this, um, where you're only permitted to serve food, how many staff do you have? Oh, I got like 10 people. But uh, just to mention to have it clear. The patio closed at midnight. It's not supposed to be no one sitting inside there. We close the patio. And after that, it's not no one allowing the patio at that time, after midnight. The but back to the, person, back to the person bringing their own alcohol, what do you do now to prevent people from bringing their own alcohol into the patio? Well, since that happened, I hired a security company because I don't want it to happen a second time. Because like I said, I love the neighborhood. I live in East Boston for 38 years. And I'm a good neighbor and I don't want my neighbors to. Uh, okay, well, what do you make of the neighbor calling City Hall saying that the disruptive behavior by patrons is affecting the quality of life? Yeah, like I say, I hire uh, the officer that can tell you, I hire a security company. And after that, uh, nothing happens, you know, we keep in control of the people. Like I said, they already come already drunk for so many places in East Boston. So that's the type of crowd that I have to to work on it. So when they come to my restaurant, believe me, they already have a few drinks on it. At two, three in the morning, people, I mean, and I, got, and I don't have the best people at that time of the, the night, you know what I mean? So uh, that's all I do. I've been doing it for 20 years and it's been no, no major issues and I apologize for the neighbors, but uh, like I said, I, I'm always cooperating with the police. They always go there, I get all the videos. Uh, every week, if something happens in the corner or in the back of my restaurant, I provide the videos to Montesino. I cooperate uh, Vice President of the East Boston Chambers of Commerce for four years. I know how it is in the neighborhood. So I love East Boston and I try to do my best. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, I don't have any other questions right now. Thank you. Commissioner Carr, Commissioner Saxon, any questions? I think everything was covered. Thank you. Nothing from me. Thank you. Thank you. The board will take this under advisement as well. Calling item number 10, Cheezine Inc. doing business as Fromage, located at 399 to 401 West Broadway in South Boston. Day of the incident, July 15th, 2022. No outdoor dining approval in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. No ISD certificate in violation of Mass General Laws Chapter 138, Section 64, and Board's Rule 1.02b, and no entertainment license posted. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Do we have anybody here uh, on behalf of Fromage? Okay, we will take a second call for that one as well. Um, before we move on to the uh, cancellation here and let me just take a quick check to see if anyone is present with us on behalf of Redline Pizza. Okay, we'll take a, uh, another call for that one after we uh, dispose of item number 11. That currently concludes the violations before the board today. Um, item number 11 is to consider the cancellation of a license located at Ubor Cha Cha Restaurant LLC located at 45 Beach Street. Uh, the board held a mandatory informational hearing on August 22nd, 2022, at which the licensee was put on notice of the potential cancellation of the license due to the alleged change in beneficial interest and management, effectively transferring a non-transferable license without the board's approval. Following that hearing, the board left the record open for seven days for the licensee to provide the board with any documents that uh, may sway the board, persuade the board in, this in deciding the cancellation of this license or not, uh, among those documents shared with the board was an instrument signed and notarized, uh, which purported to transfer the alcohol license in violation of its non-transferable status. Um, is anyone present on behalf of the licensee this morning? Is there anybody here on behalf of Boober Cha Cha Restaurant who wishes to testify uh, as to the status of this license. Okay, uh, any comments from the board prior to Thursday's vote? Nothing further on 
Thank you. Uh, with that, we will take one more second call for Redline Pizza. Has anybody joined us from Redline Pizza? Seeing that this is uh, their second time not uh, appearing for this same violation, Chairman Joyce, how would you like to dispose of this? Would you like this still read into the record um, by the police? Uh, we'll read into the record and we'll add it to the agenda to vote on, on Thursday. Okay. Uh, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Yeah, I am. Thank you, Detective Hernandez. If you could please read the report into the record. Good morning. I'm going to read a police report um, authored by Sergeant Ga uh, William Gallagher. Um, on 2 3 2022, about 1242 a.m., Sergeant Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez signed to the license premise unit responded to 582 Dorchester Ave Redline Pizza for reports that the premise was staying open beyond its posted 11 p.m. closing hour. As noted, as noted on its City of Boston Common Repeals License, LB100327. Detectives sat outside the premise for several minutes and observed patients entering and exiting the open front door of Redline Pizza, making purchases of food. Detectives entered the premise and waited in the food line for several minutes, waiting to speak to the person in charge. Detectives spoke with Mr. Uh, Marcos Ramadan, who's stated that he usually stays open until 2 a.m. Sometimes later if patients arrive, patients arrive late to pick up food orders. Detectives ob observed on Redline Pizza's menu the posted hours of 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. Detectives inquired whether the conviction's license was where the conviction license was located. After several minutes, Mr. Ramada was able to produce a current CV license with a posted closing hour of 11 p.m. The premise, however, the premise could, however, stay open delivery only till 2 a.m. Detectives were informed that Redline did employ a delivery driver. None of the people observed placing orders were delivery people. As a result of what was observed, Shine Detective Gallagher issued license premise inspection number 042322 to Redline Pizza for premise operating after the post at 11 p.m. closing. Patrons observed entering after closing hour, 12.42 a.m. Mr. Marco Ramadan signed for an acceptable notice. Detectives instructed Mr. Ramadan to close the stores to only delivery at that time. So. Great, thank you. And actually, I, um, I believe they may be trying to access the Zoom right now. So if we could hold just one moment, um, they are actually at the front desk of our office right now trying to access the Zoom. No, I think they were here earlier today, Danny. Uh, no, I actually think our receptionist is trying to help them right now. moment I can hear them calling onto the phone right now.
there seems to be some difficulty with the licensee accessing this hearing in the meantime. Um, are there any questions for Detective Hernandez from the board? So Detective, just to be clear, you guys observed other people other than takeout delivery drivers, other than delivery drivers um, entering the premise after um, 11 p.m.? Yes, ma'am, correct. Okay. I have no other questions. Any other questions from the board? I don't have any questions, thank you. Oh, we have just been joined. Just one second, I see that someone has just joined us. Hello, is this uh, or is this someone on behalf of Redline Pizza who's just joined us? We've been joined by a phone number ending in 9785. If you could please unmute yourself. Are you joining us on behalf of Redline Pizza? Hello. Yes, hello. Could oh, you've unmuted your you've muted yourself again? Hi, could you please identify yourself? If you could please unmute yourself. Yes, hello. Could I'm you please, unmuted. Yes, could you please identify yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Heba Mohammed. I'm calling in regards of Redline Pizza. Thank you. Um, just going to ask you do, you, do you sort of tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You are under oath here at a violation hearing? Yes. Great, thank you. This is in regards to uh, an incident on February 23rd, 2022, uh, with your premise operating after your uh, closing hour. The police report has already been read into the record. Um, would you like uh, to say a few words to address the incident? Um, okay. Okay, so I'm actually here with my uncle. He's the owner of Redline Pizza. I'm here to basically translate, but he just wants to make, um, he just wants to know what he can do in order to solve this problem and how we can go further. What, does he understand that his license is only until 11 p.m.? Yes, he does understand that. And that he can only have delivery after 11 p.m.? Yes, um, he wanted to know um, if there is, a way to have a license to only have pick up after 11 p.m. if that's possible. I believe that's what your license is, but the detective testified earlier today before you joined us that he observed with his own eyes people coming in to the restaurant that were not delivery drivers ordering and um, paying for pizzas and that the website says you're open till 2 a.m. Yes. Nice. I'm sorry, I'm just translating for him. I apologize. Um, after 2 a.m. after 2 a.m. after 11 p.m. Okay. So he said, um, like moving forward, what he can do, he can take out um, okay. the seating after 11 p.m. in order for no one to come in and sit down. Um, if that was okay with you guys. I mean, I'm not gonna tell him that he has to take his seats out or not. I'm gonna tell him he has to make sure that no one is coming into the premise to sit down and eat after 11 p.m. It can only be delivery drivers. I would suggest yes. you put up signs and change his website immediately. Okay. So change his website and what else? I'm sorry. Put up signage to indicate that it's closed at 11 p.m. Oh, yes. The sign has already been up. I actually put that up myself. Um, but we can change the website saying that there is no um, anyone is allowed on the premises after 11 p.m. except for drivers. Yeah. And could you send us a copy of the signage you put in your Door. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can actually take a picture of it and send it to you via email. Thank you. You can send that to licensingboard at boston.gov. Okay, one, well, yeah. one of the issues there, though, is that they leave the door open and everybody just walks in right, they're right across from the uh, uh, T station and, and anybody just walks right in. And that's what we, we were noticing that people just stroll right in, put an order in, and then just hang out, whether inside or outside. And it's been an ongoing issue still. 
So this is okay, Detective so Fernandez on the phone. So he's he's on the Zoom. He's stating that people are just walking in because you don't lock the door at 11 p.m. Okay, so what we will do from now on is um, lock the door after 11 p.m. So just close the door, <laughs> not lock it. Just close, close it, it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and we'll close the light. Yeah. And I will take the chair, all the seating out. I put two bars on it. I'm not sure if you guys heard what he was saying. No, I didn't. Um, so what he will do, he will, he will close the door um, and remove the seating from um, the area so no one would come in and sit down. Okay, and you need to turn people away who come in off the street and try to place orders after 11 p.m. Understood. The, the closing the door is still not the issue. They're going to open the door and come in. That's what happens. Yeah. They'll either walk in or come in where the door is open, open like it has been, or closed. They're just going to open the door and walk right in. That's what we've been noticing still. Okay, so what we will do is that we'll highly enforce people to um, not come in after that time unless they're um, just picking up or it's a delivery driver. Okay, and you might want to consider locking it at 11 and having someone work the door so that it's only delivery drivers. Understood, okay. And just, you're not open for pickup either, it's just delivery. Just delivery, okay. So yep. the people picking up need to be employees. Gotcha, okay. But, but like this, like we lose a lot of business, like, uh, like hi how are you doing sir like uh, but excuse me like we can't excuse you sir like only for pickup because we lost we lose a lot of business like that uh, but for the seating and somebody sitting in the store this never happened again because this affected for our business too much sir go ahead madam chair so I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. We understand that, but that is not what's permitted on your license. You would have to go through a community process and apply to have your license amended. Right now, you're operating outside of your license. I understand that's when you get a lot of your um, business, but you are in violation of the terms of your license right now. So if you would like to operate later than that, you need to contact the board and ONS and start a public process to see if that's permitted. Okay, I'm just, oh, but, uh, let me just translate, I'm sorry. I told you that if you to pick up because you can do the process and you take the license and you can do the only thing, delivery. Okay, no problem. But if you don't have to do the license, you can do the pick up Okay, so he understands. He just wants to know like what the process would be um, to get a license for pickup, but um, that would be through the office card yes you would need to formally apply with our office to amend your license uh, for the hours to include pickup and not just delivery um you can reach out to us licensing board at boston.gov um, to start the process if you would like to submit an application for that but right now your license only allows delivery between 11 p.m and 2 a.m okay that's that's perfect okay any further questions uh, from the board no Okay. The board will take this matter under advisement as well, and we will reach out to Fromage to reschedule. Um, those are all of the items before the board today. Thank you very much, everybody. That concludes this hearing. Thank you. Thank you.